something for you. Now listen to this and then tell me what you think. Theory proves that consciousness moves to another universe after death. A book titled Biocentrism, How Life and Consciousness Are the Keys to Understanding the Nature of the Universe, has stirred up the internet because it contained a notion that life does not end when the body dies, which is pleasing news to all of us. It can last forever. The author of this publication, scientist Robert Lanza, and that's, there's also that uh, neurologist who had an afterlife or after death experience, who was voted the third most important scientist alive <laughs> by the New York Times, has no doubts that this is possible beyond time and space. Lanza is an expert in regenerative medicine and scientific director of advanced cell technology company. Before he has known for his extensive research, which dealt with stem cells, he was also famous for several successful experiments on cloning endangered animal species. But not so long ago, the scientist became involved with physics, quantum mechanics, and astrophysics. This explosive mixture has given birth to the new theory of biocentrism, which the professor has been preaching ever since. Biocentrism teaches that life and consciousness are fundamental to the universe. It is consciousness that creates the material universe, not the other way around. Hmm. Yes, I've heard this before. Have you? Have you heard this before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've heard some of it before. Yes, I have too. Yes. Lanza points to the not, structure. Not, but not in this, not in this sort of format. No, 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 I haven't, but... It makes sense on the outside. Don't you agree? Well, the universe is alive. Yes. You can ask Thriving. It's like Earth. Earth, Earth is a with. living organism. Yes. The ancient Egyptians thought that people were stars. Lanza points to the structure of the universe itself. And that the laws, forces, and constants of the universe appear to be fine-tuned for life, implying intelligence existed prior to matter. I've often thought that that it, uh, that intelligence or you know consciousness had to create material to inhabit, because if it's just yep. a airborne consciousness with no matter. It would probably have that kind of power, I would think. He also claims that space and time are not objects or things, but rather tools of our animal understanding. Lanza says that we carry space and time around with us, like turtles with shells, meaning that when the shell comes off space and time, we still exist. The theory implies that death, of consciousness simply does not exist. And I know atoms live forever, correct? Atom, oh, yeah. Except when they, yeah, well, that's right, they do, because even when they get smashed up, they're still alive. Mm -hmm. They're just smaller, aren't they? Yeah, it's argued that you can't eliminate information from the universe. It only exists as a thought because people identify themselves with their body. They believe that the body is going to perish sooner or later, thinking their consciousness will disappear too. If the body generates consciousness, then consciousness dies when the body dies. But if the body receives consciousness in the same way that a cable box receives satellite signals, then of course the consciousness does not end at the death of the physical vehicle. In fact, consciousness exists outside of constraints of time and space. It is able to be anywhere. In the human body, 
and outside of it. In other words, it is non-local in the same sense that some objects are non-local. Lanza also believes that multiple universes can exist simultaneously. In one universe, the body can be dead, and in another, it continues to exist. That's interesting. Absorbing consciousness, which migrated into this universe. This means that a dead person, while traveling through the same tunnel, ends up not in hell or in heaven, but in a similar world he or she once inhabited, but this time alive, and so on. Indefinitely. It's almost like a cosmic Russian doll afterlife effect. What do you think of that, Andy? Mm hmm. You agree with that? So um, multiple, multiple yeah. universes, mm -hmm. and you migrate while traveling through the tunnel, ends up not in hell or in, in between them. That's like right. When, when we That's die right. in this universe, we're born in another. That's fascinating. Mm. I never considered that. But you, but you go to a similar place. Mm -hmm. So the similarities are always the same. So you go to the parallel, the parallel equivalent of where you were. But this time, you're still alive. Now you mm. see, do we get to pick who we're going to be? Or do we enter like a Russian roulette? speaking of Russian, of you got to just yeah. enter the barrel and if you might end up a monkey or a fly or a human being living in America or in China or or is it I want to be in that person? I don't think you necessarily get a choice of the person, but you'd still end up being human. But yes, you would because it says here, you migrate... You migrate through the same, but, but you've got to migrate to a similar world mm -hmm. that you once inhabited. So, in other okay. words, it might not be called America, but it would right. be somewhere where you'd have, I suppose, in today's world, we'd call it a privileged existence. Mm. Well, you know, it, that makes so much more sense to me than we're just some cosmic accident. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I like the idea that there was a um, consciousness before there could be that. Well, it goes, it goes on here. Multiple worlds. This hope instilling but extremely controversial theory by Lanza has many unwitting supporters. Not just mere mortals who want to live forever, but also some well-known scientists. These are the physicists and astrophysicist that word doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, who tend These to... These are the physicists and astrophysicists. Yeah. <laughs> See what I mean? Who Blue tend to away. agree with existence of parallel worlds and who suggest... Go ahead, Andy, finish it. Who suggest the possibility of multiple universes. Go, Greg. No, you go. Are you doing good? Multiverse, multi-universe is a so-called scientific concept which they defend. They believe that no physical laws exist that would prohibit the existence of parallel worlds. Very good. The first one was a science fiction writer, H.G. Wells who proclaimed in 1895 in his story, The Door and the Wall. That's where you asked me about that. And after 62 years, this idea was developed by Dr. Hugh Everett. In his graduate thesis at Princeton University, it basically posits that at any given moment, the universe divides into countless similar instances. And the next moment, these newborn universes split in a similar fashion. In some of these worlds, you may be present reading this article in one universe or watching TV in another. Go.
the triggering factor of these multiplying worlds is our actions, explained Evan. If we make some choices, instantly one universe splits into two with different versions of outcomes. So is that for the individual or is that for everyone, if you get what I mean by that, <clears throat> Greg? So yes, as an yes. individual, when I make a, a decision right. about something, it can split into all various, into the various things that that th First, decision about, could be. Mm -hmm. mm. In some other mm. universe, perhaps we lost World War II, or, but it was called something else. But here's the thing that your question was profound because does it split off into many other universes just for that person or for the whole universe at hand? Or does everybody get their own universe? Everybody gets, that's got to be more like it, dude. That's but Within I, the universe. Yeah, like the Russian yeah. doll thing. I get it. Yeah. In the 1980s, Andre Lindy, Lind, yeah. scientist, Lebedev's Institute of Physics, developed the theory of multiple universes. He is now a professor at Stanford University. Lind explained, space consists of many inflating spheres. Oh boy. Which give rise to similar spheres. And those in turn produce spheres in even greater numbers. And so on to infinity. In the universe, they are spaced apart. Kind of makes you feel small, doesn't it? <laughs> they are not aware of each other's existence, but they represent parts of the same physical universe. That is interesting, Greg. In, in so much of what we come across, we go, oh, the mainstream doesn't look at this, doesn't look at that. Yet here you have a professor at Stanford, which is, you know, yeah. not some little chick chicken feed university, allowed yeah. to run these ideas, which are basically the same ideas that all of us in the electric universe yeah. run. Yeah. They just called it, <clears throat> they just give it a different name. Yeah. It's the place. Well, you know, this, this is the thing. When they say there's no island in space, that goes from the uh, macro to the micro. Now, that's, now, when we go to these different universes, I'm thinking they're going to be different sizes all the way up to so immense that you can see the beings of the bigger universe in our nebulae. Now, I know it's crazy, right? But, I mean, it's just so big to us. It looks like some big fog, you know? And then, I mean, I, it sounds crazy, but then there are atoms. There are these little water bearers who have a whole universe. They're so tiny in a drop of water. Yeah, that's interesting. And that's and, and there's also the theories where, so, <clears throat> like, as you pointed out before, they say, what I get, the energy I get from the sun now is eight minutes old. Yeah. But then, is it eight minutes old? Because when you turn on the generator main switch at the power station, mm -hmm. the power is immediate. Immediate. Yeah, so it just excites there. Yeah, that's so it, uh, Einstein's hypothetical speed of light thing, you know. Yeah. I don't think light travels, honestly. I think it emits. And the atoms in between become illuminated, you know. So like the wave, yeah. the wave in various formats, which goes back to what... Um, Winter talks about with his business and um, you now what is it, Plank times gold with the gold ratio. And then, of course, you've got the bloke from Austria who did the water. Yeah. Uh, what was he? Yeah. Right, uh, you've got him. Yeah. And, and that's all <clears> about <throat> waves, the fourth state of water, all about wave, all about that wave. Yeah. Also, you got the Japanese fellow who would uh, freeze things. He would say, I love you and thank you. And it would come out some beautiful sphere, a looking thing like a snowflake. And he would yep. say, I hate you. You're worthless. And it would come out black and deformed. That kind of implies that the water itself is alive. Yes. 
Yes. And in that so, water are atoms of hydrogen and oxygen, who must be alive. I mean, it must just be never ending. It's just a life form that we don't recognize. And it's all connected with electricity. And when we drink water, we are part of that life form. Yeah. Yeah, I, I write sometimes, I don't much anymore, but my son still does. He writes thank you on his water bottle and I love you and stuff like that. It's corny, but not really if water has memory. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fact that our Hi. universe is not supported by data received from the Planck Space Telescope using the data scientists have created most accurate map of the microwave background. Now that's kind of getting into mainstream stuff. Okay, so called, the so called cosmic relic background radiation, which has remained so since the inception fact. of our universe. They also found that the universe has a lot of dark recesses on, represented by some holes and extensive gaps. Well, there is that one gap that's like billions of light years across. It's just nothing but blackness. And it's at the porthole between them. Mm -hmm. At least he didn't say black holes and dark matter. Please don't say that because then they'll lose me. But then they're operating within the constraints of mainstream science. So I would, how could, you know, why would I expect them not to go there? Because they might have to. They have, you know, if you don't toe the line, you're out. Yep. This is this is being a rebel, if you ask me. I don't know. Direct result of attacks on us by neighboring universes. How about that? <laughs> That's what the gaps are from. Okay, here we go with soul. And we're about it's about over. A few more paragraphs. Soul. So if there's abundance of and just feel free to cut in whenever. The soul. So there is abundance of places or other universes where our soul could migrate after death, according to the theory of neobiocentrism. But does the soul exist? Is there any scientific theory of consciousness that could accommodate such a claim? According to Dr. Stuart Hemeroff, a near-death experience happens when some information that inhabits the nervous system leaves the body and dissipates into the universe. Contrary to materialistic accounts of consciousness, Dr. Hameroff offers an alternative explanation of consciousness that can perhaps appeal to both the rational scientific mind and the personal intuitions. Help me out, Andy, read that. I'm going to get a drink of water. Consciousness, consciousness resides, according to Stuart, and British physicist Sir Roger Penrose mm -hmm. in the microtubules of brain cells, which are primary sites of quantum processing. Upon death, this information is released from your body, meaning your consciousness goes with it. They have argued that our experience of consciousness is the result of gravity effects in these microtubes a theory which they dubbed orchestrated objective reduction. What did you make of that? Well, um, yes, well, I, I've read where the conscious, the, the soul leaves mm -hmm. the body mm -hmm. and then eventually it will find another body. And I'm pretty sure it's from about 12 to 18 months of age a person gets a, a jolt, and that's when, because when you're born, you're carrying your mother's soul. Mm -hmm. And then you have to get your own soul. And that soul, although it has the memory, the memory is not, is not really available. So you can't see that past life of that soul, but you know there is a past life. Do you think soul groups are possible? That's what uh, Edgar Casey said. That we live, we have soul groups that stick together. Let's see if you yeah, bring one be, soul into the universe would, before its time, another soul might have to die. 
Because it's that soul. Mm -hmm. Which scares oh. me about grandchildren. <laughs> but I know that can't be. That this No. No. No, it's once the soul inhabits that yeah. that will be the soul that yeah. will be there. Mm -hmm. Possibly a possibly a, a, a what they call a near death experience. Yeah. The soul may be able to change. Or if you got multiple souls, wouldn't that give you multiple personalities? Right, right. I think we each have one soul. I think that could be Except said. for people that have multiple personalities. Yeah, you know, like uh, people who had schizophrenia and hear voices. Yeah, that could Some be multiple souls. They think that they really are hearing voices. They have just tuned into a different universe. Yeah, and that's quite possible if you're thinking about what these people are written. Yes. So then their body's in a turmoil of which which soul, the other souls are trying to, there was further up there where it talked about it, the other souls are trying to push that one out because they want to take over. Oh. Because they, if they don't get, so if you've got one soul, I thought that and, two was are trying to, yeah. and two others are trying to enter your, you, yeah. when you when you die from this life, yeah. what happens to them two other souls that didn't get to get the existence at that time? Do they stay floating? I, you know, that might explain ghosts. I was just about to say, you know, there's there are there are many enigmatic things that happen with, uh, you know, you can even watch them on YouTube videos. It's crazy mm -hmm. how, much, how much paranormal activity there is on the earth. Yeah. You know, and there's been people who have gone to old insane asylums, and, you know, that were vacated years before, and it's just almost too crazy to even stay there. That must mean there, some people after death are tortured, perhaps because they're the way that they died or, you know, like they were murdered or something. Uh, consciousness, or at least proto-consciousness, is theorized by them to be a fundamental property of the universe present even at the first moment of the universe during the Big Bang. It never happened. The universe has, has been here, possibly know how it came to be. That's mainstream drivel. And one, I told you they'd have to go there at some point. In yeah. one such scheme, proto-consciousness experience is a basic property of physical reality accessible to a quantum process associated with brain activity. Our souls are in fact constructed from the very fabric of the universe. Oh, well, we're star stuff. Yeah, we know that. And may have existed up, up. since the beginning of time. Our brains are just receivers and amplifiers for the proto-consciousness that is intrinsic to the fabric of space-time. That's heavy. I think Walt Thornhill even himself had uh, implied that Consciousness comes from without, just like the power of the sun. So is there really a part of your consciousness that is non-material and will live on after death of your physical body? I'm sorry. Well, I'm let's have a look at this bit, Greg. Let me read let's that. Let's have again. a little so, look at this. Kind of, I want to read that last sentence. So is there really a part of our consciousness that is non-material and will live on after death of our physical body? Go. Okay. <clears throat> what I was going to say is early on in the article, they mm -hmm. talked about the microwaves they are now able to measure that would have been prior to the present or the Big Bang. And then somewhere mm -hmm. in here they get lost and they start talking Big Bang. Well, hang on. We're talking before Big Bang. Yeah. So the Big Bang's not really such a Big Bang. No because all this was happening prior, yeah, in the last age. Yeah, how the universe came about is something that I don't even think we could ever, ever understand, because it's probably always well, was, and that boggles the mind in itself. Well, let's look at, at the plasma, and I would, I would probably say they're putting too much emphasis on the brain and yeah. not enough emphasis 
on the plasma within the body, which our blood is or the basically plasma. Yes, that's right. And 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 your blood carries your consciousness. That's very good. So when when the blood stops, the plasma leaves the body. And yeah. consciousness itself is in the plasma. Yes. I get it. Yes. I get it. And everything, like the electric universe, so much of what Walt Thornhill and those people talk about is about the plasma. Yes, and it has uh -huh. a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it's you go. A, See, so he's living. Well, and he's there's living. a couple paragraphs here. Let's yeah. get them over with. Dr. Hamroff, go ahead. Did you, did you have Let's something go. to say, Andy? I'm sorry. No, you go. Okay. No, no, you go. Dr. Hameroff told the Science Channel through the wormhole documentary, let's say the heart stops beating, the blood stops flowing, the microtubules lose their state. The information within the microtubules is not destroyed. It can't be destroyed. It just distributes, dissipates to the universe at large. Robert Lanza would add here, not only does it exist in the universe, it exists perhaps in another universe. If the patient is resuscitated, revived, the information can go back into the microtubules and in the patient says, I had a near death experience. He adds, if they're not revived and the patient dies, it's possible that this information can exist outside the body perhaps indefinitely, as a soul. This account of consciousness, word I don't say easily, consciousness, explains things with near-death experiences, astral projection, out-of-body experiences, and even reincarnation without needing to appeal to religious ideology. The energy of your consciousness potentially gets recycled back into a different body at some point. And in the meantime, it exists outside of the physical body on some other level of reality and possibly in another universe. The end. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say the author's name, does it? Um. Give, him, give him credit. It just says by admin. And I'll put the link in the description. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I thought that the folks would be interested in this. I know that whenever I see something about life after death, you know, I've been seeking answers for a long time. I'm sure we all are. And I, anytime anything has anything to do with consciousness or, you know, our souls, I'm, I'm sure people are interested in it like I am. And, and the, and the thing is, you don't need, say, uh, a definitive religion to have consciousness, right? And and to have a soul, right? Because the soul is the energy within you, which we know has to be the plasma within the plasma. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think that's the key. It's always been about the plasma. Yep. Even Don Scott, you know, yep. like he said that all the lights we see in the night sky is plasma. You say, well, I can see the moon. Yeah, but the moon is reflecting the sun, which is plasma. <laughs> the light. Yes, and it changes states, um, yeah. which gives you all your elements and mm -hmm. transmutations. Yeah. Um, different with the different energy levels within it which is the soul how how many souls hey. yeah i know that's the thing i mean there's you could ask a million questions you know about it and it just keeps being more mysterious you know but uh i i really put a lot of stock into what that one guy said uh, the, the neurologist who had the neuro... I mean, this is a scientific-minded guy. He didn't believe in any of it before. He got some kind of encephalitis of the brain. He swelled up. They didn't expect him to live. He was in a coma. Yeah. 
and he died. Yeah. And he, he, I guess they brought him back, but he had this whole experience of riding on a butterfly's wing and uh, meeting his sister who was deceased. And he didn't even know her at the time. And she told him his name and whatever. And when he got back and the, uh, after he had went back to normal, they found the sister that was long lost. And it was that girl that he was talking to in the afterlife. And that just blows my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's scary, dude. It's like we're being run by homicidal maniacs. Homicidal and suicidal maniacs. The patients are running the asylum. <laughs> yeah. They didn't want to see them. Basically. All right. Well, that that was a good installment for the consciousness. Do you have anything else to add? Not, not. We should we're go gonna, through we're that. Gonna, yeah, we're gonna. Oh yeah, we will. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do a few segments like this. This is just the first. All right. Checking out. Yeah.